Thank you to Omaze for sponsoring today's video. Omaze gives away one-of-a-kind prizes and experiences while donating money to chosen charities all across the world. Their sustainable approach to fundraising means that nonprofits can spend less time and money raising funds and focus on serving the needs of their communities. Right now, you can enter for a chance to win an Airstream Interstate 24X. You could score a custom coach with luxury amenities with off-road capability. The Airstream Interstate 24 boasts quality, comfort, and is backed by best-in-class safety and performance. This is built for you. Whether you're mountain biking, surfing, or exploring off-road, it seats six people and comfortably sleeps too. With their ride suspension, all-terrain tires, expansive solar power, kitchen, microwave, and bathroom, you'll feel at home anywhere on the map. All donations support the Jimmy Johnson Foundation, which is dedicated to assisting children, families, and communities in need throughout the United States. The foundation currently focuses on funding K-12 public education through their Champions Grant Program. For your chance to win an Airstream Interstate 24X and support the Jimmy Johnson Foundation, a great cause, go to amaze.com slash redpoppyranch. When the sun's going down No stars in the sky I'm gonna head down the road Across county lines where the roll of the smoke They pour beer and wine And hearts break on the jukebox Where the neon stars shine Where the neon stars shine Always. 
Back to the goat barn. First, let me say that I'm building the goat barn similar to how you might build a pole barn. I'll be running most of the two by sixes horizontally. I'm trying to keep any untreated lumber from touching the ground because I know that with the animals around here, wood is gonna rot away probably a little faster than normal. But ultimately all I'm trying to do is create a structure that I can secure board and bat and siding to and create a shelter where the goats can get out of the weather when it's bad and as they all start having babies, hopefully this is where they have them. If you were paying attention at the beginning of the video, I flew the drone above our property, up onto public land, and I followed the creek up as far as I could with the drone, and you could just see one of the many springs that feeds that creek. Flying the drone around gives a perspective that I have never had before, and I find myself flying it more and more. We considered building a pole barn instead of spending the money on the concrete foundation that is now the shop, and it would be a quick and easy way to put up a building that typically wouldn't cost anywhere near as much because you don't have the concrete foundation, but I was always concerned about the snow and the snow load. And this year we've got some seriously heavy snow around here because we had that rain in January and I'm more than happy with how the new roofs around the shop have handled the snow. I just got back from our local uh, recycle scrap yard uh, because I needed a piece of steel. I got the steel and as I was leaving I noticed something sitting on uh, the desk of the scrap yard. And I picked it up and I asked the guy, I said, where did this come from? And he said, we have an entire uh, shed full of what I'm talking about. And so Rhett, Rhett doesn't know what I'm, I'm uh, about to, to show him. But this is from 1952. That's sweet. Show the camera. Oh, as I drop it. He just broke it. Show the camera. So he had this can sitting on his desk. And I said to him, I said, uh, that's gotta be, well, I thought it was World War II era. It was Korean War era, general purpose grease. And he said somebody in town uh, needed to clean out a barn or something and they, they had like 400 boxes. So he sold me a box of military grade general purpose grease from 1952 for 50 cents a can. I paid 24 bucks for it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I promise you the next time I need some American made grease from 1952, I know where I'm gonna get it from. But uh, anyway, I thought it was cool. It is cool. It doesn't feel like we've gotten anywhere near as much snow as we usually would by this time of year, but we did have that rain in January and that causes the snow to get very, very heavy. Looking at it now, it's obvious we should have shoveled this off a couple of weeks ago. 
Underneath all of the snow that has accumulated here from both the second story and the first story, there's about a four inch thick sheet of ice. And the bottom line is there's some serious weight on this front porch right now. Shoveling the roof off is also a good opportunity for Rhett and I to take the earbuds out and to spend a little bit of time talking. The older he gets, it seems the less I do of that stuff, but I always try to be as present as I can in all of our kids' lives. And sometimes I feel like I'm playing catch up, but there's nothing better than spending some time talking with your son and trying to shovel a little bit of snow in the process. He's a good worker and I told him that wherever he ends up in life it needs to be pretty close by because I don't want to shovel the roof off by myself. As soon as it gets above freezing and stays above freezing, this front porch is going to come down anyways. It's hard to see, but if you look at the front of the house right here, the way this wood siding took the stain is how we hope the entire house would turn out. As I was using the stain that I had, which was a very high quality, very expensive stain and sealer, I tried to consistently mix it as I rolled the stain on. And by the time I got around to the front of the house, the stain was much darker. So we stopped because we weren't happy with how the front turned out. This is also something we are gonna take care of for the last time this summer. I still have quite a bit of that siding on the first floor that I'm going to remove and change from a horizontal siding to a vertical siding before I can finish staining it. The first part of next week, I'm gonna run over to the local sawmill, pick up what I need to finish all of the board and batten siding across the back of the shop.
I've talked about it before, but the problem this time of year is I don't want to use my trailers if I can help it because they all have about three feet of snow on them. And even if I dug them out, it's very difficult to safely get it up the road and get it put back where I took it from when the snow is like this. That means I get to stack way more wood than I probably should on the back of my dually and get it back here and get it unloaded safely. And that might take more than one trip, but we will find out next week. After moving from Arizona to southeastern Idaho, our very first winter here, we had the coldest weather that I'd ever seen. We spent New Year's with some friends at their house, and the later it got, the colder it got. When we left their house, around 2 a.m. it was 26 degrees below zero. Since then we really have not had that kind of cold. Not even close to it. But this morning it got down to 13 below zero. It's cold enough that I don't want the goats having babies out in the open, if possible. For the next few weeks it's going to be cold and I need to get the goat barn finished. And I'm trying to make the 4x4 window that I'm taking out of the shop to work right here. I'm scabbing things together a little bit here and there to make everything work. But I wanted to let as much natural sunlight into the goat barn as I possibly could. I'm trying to keep the window up as high as I possibly can so it doesn't get broken out by one of the goats. And remember, I still have to tear down the old chicken coop once the new chicken coop and the goat barn are finished, but I can't do much with that coop until the snow is gone. So the plan is to stack as many as a hundred bales of hay right here in this spot so this window needs to go away, and that's why there's a 4x4 window on the side of the goat barn. And I hope that lets a whole lot of natural light right in.
So if we as a family are now in the goat business, we're going to have to make some hard decisions at some point over summer. We currently have eight goats. Four of those goats are on their third pregnancy. Four of those goats, this is their first pregnancy. If you do the math the way I do the math, that is 12 baby goats we could very easily have on top of the eight goats we already have. This little goat barn is not big enough for 20 goats. All of our goats are from some sort of a dairy variety, whether it's a Sonnen or a La Mancha. And while we don't actively milk them, we very easily could. I personally would love to figure out how to make cheese with goat's milk. The way things are going, we might be ahead of the curve if we got our very own full-scale dairy goat operation online before we absolutely had to have it. Whether or not we turn it into a dairy, we still love that we can put the goats up on the hill and let them pick through the invasive weeds and do their job in helping the new grass come in. Whether you like it or not, you're actively participating in urban sprawl as you watch us carve our way into nature. And this will be the fourth year since I originally thinned the maple trees on the hillside and I'm fairly confident the grass on the hill this year is going to be better than it ever has been before. So the goats aren't entirely freeloaders. There's just not a whole lot they can do over winter when they're cooped up to a limited amount of space. The least I can do is make that little bit of space the most usable and the most comfortable for them as it can be. Part of my reasoning behind running the 2x6s horizontally instead of vertically is the fact that the board and batten siding needs something to be secured to. And by running the board and batten siding vertically, I have plenty of bracing for it horizontally. We will continue the board and batten look all the way around the shop and tie it into both the front and the back. And then other than the house and the repairs that I will do on the house siding, I should be done with board and batten for a while.
I can see the appeal in why a pole barn would be so much easier to build than a conventional foundation style building. And they get built around here quite a bit. But the heavy snow load can be very hard on a building if you don't have adequate number of trusses to handle the load. There's nothing structural about these walls here. And the way that it's all secured and put together, we could very easily take this apart and change it if we feel the need to do so down the road. If the herd gets smaller, or if we get out of the goat business altogether, maybe this becomes my man cave out here. Okay. 18 inch by 36 window. A, a vertical slide window, one there, one here. I deliberately put them up high. Just for light, that's it? For light, that's it. Not for them to headbutt? That's why I put them up high. Okay. I wanted to take it out of that spot there because that's where hay's gonna go. Okay. So, same height as that window, these two windows. Board and batten around the whole thing. This is a door. This door is wider, two inches wider than a wheelbarrow, so we can get in here and... Are you going to leave that right there? No, no, I'll cut that out of there. So that would be gone. Okay. She's huge. She could, she could have twins, if not triplets, right here. And we could easily have... 18 goats. Like, a bunch of babies running around. So my thoughts are the door swings this way. I don't think you need another thing that can get broken either. I, I feel like that's So just do that to size go. window and that's it? Uh-huh. Okay. I feel like they're gonna one horn into that window and it's dead. It's no, they gotta get up that high. <laughs> okay. On our next upcoming video, hopefully the goat barn will be completely finished in the board and batten siding. And I'll get back to the underground chicken coop and get that one checked off the list as well. All right, I'm done for the day. Uh, I'm not gonna do any more until I can get over to the sawmill and pick up all of the one by 12s that I'm gonna need for the board and batten to go around uh, the barn. And then I'm gonna move over here to the chicken coop. I'm gonna turn this entire opening in this back wall basically into uh, like the roof of a greenhouse. I'm gonna use some sort of a transparent plastic, um, um, a polycarbonate plastic or something and make an entire window uh, that could potentially warm up the chicken coop as well. Um, both of the, the, the barn and the coop are going to have windows so when it does get warm we can open those windows up and, and, and hopefully help with that. But anyway, that's the focus over the next few days is to see if we can't get this goat barn completely finished and then get this, uh, this underground chicken coop finished up. Then I can start watching the uh, new chicken coop and see if it's any warmer than it would be otherwise if it was just freestanding versus underground.